What's going on guys? So I am out here at the 2024 Houston RV show and we're going to take a look at another absolutely amazing floor plan from the folks over at Ibex. So you guys probably saw I did a reveal on the first Ibex RV suite and this is another iteration of it and they've done so many cool things to these things I got to show it to you and I'm even going to give you some recommendations because that's what I promised you coming into the new year on what I think they might be able to do a little bit different. Hang tight I'll be right back. Let's start by taking a look at the numbers at this unit. So it's gonna have a 9,615 pound gross vehicle weight rating and a cargo capacity of 2,014 pounds. It's gonna have a dry weight of 7,601 pounds and it's 32 feet, six inches long. So it's actually a relatively light unit, not half ton towable in my opinion, I'd put this behind a three quarter ton, but there's a lot of reasons why you might like a floor plan like this. First of all, I love this storage box that they put up front. This is super, super cool. It gives you a lot of storage and capability up here it's just really really nice and it's also a great place to house your batteries something that's unique this is going to have more of a destination style rv look to it because it has a super flat front to it so it's not going to have a great wind profile going down the road so keep that in mind this also has i don't know if it's the auto leveling system but it has a smart jack up front which is the one that returns to a preset level or preset height, which makes it really easy to work with. They put all sorts of really interesting features and aspects to it. It definitely has the roof line more of a cabin than an RV. Let's walk around this and see what it's all about. I like that they put the uh, Moride safety rail here as well. That's really nice. And this is the RVS2. So you guys saw the RVS1. I like the squared out windows on it as well. They look really nice. Let's step inside, it has traditional steel steps. So keep in mind, this is kind of like a destination unit, even though there's a lot of travel trailer characteristics to it. So this is super cool. So you have this Contour classic refrigerator in here. I think people will really, really like that because it definitely adds to the, the curb appeal and the wow factor of this trailer. I really like that. Has induction cooktop on it as well, which is really nice. Something you typically see on super high-end units as well as a full oven. On this side, you have kind of your sofa seating area. Now what's cool about this is that it converts into a larger seating area by pulling these out and popping everything up. So once you do that, you actually have a pretty good size seating space here. But when it's all compacted together, it's kind of compact. If you don't need that much space, you don't have to use it in other words. Nice solid surface countertop all the way across. I like the tinted stainless steel single basin sink. The sprayer up top here. It's wired for solar. You have your drawers for storage in here as well. They're not soft closing. Cabinet doors are also not soft closing. You have an interesting spot up here to be able to hang your pots and pans. You have space up here as well for things that you're gonna to wanna to put in place when you get to where you're going. Just keep in mind, you'll have to break it all down when you're done. This has a really cool Power Pro system that gives you the ability to turn the lights on and off. Let's see if they have it working. Hey, Power Pro. Lights off. All of the lights are turned off. Hey, Power Pro. Lights on. Light Zone 2 is on. Hey, Power Pro. All lights on. All of the lights are turned on. That's really cool. You can see how they use the lights inside of the batten strips. It gives it a really, really nice modern look. At the same time, a nice warm feel. Stepping into the bathroom, check this bathroom out. This is one absolutely gorgeous bathroom. And behind this door is your washer and dryer. So this is a combo unit. You could probably even put a stackable unit if you want. I love the fact that they give you adjustable shelves. That to me is a huge perk. Over here, you have two porcelain bowl sinks. Very nice. Has the shower miser system as well. Basically, a recirculation system that keeps you from wasting water whenever you're waiting for it to get hot. More drawers, more cabinets. Tons of space in here. This is definitely a luxury bathroom. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Beautiful, beautiful shower area. You have a sprayer. You have two separate shower heads and a third shower head up top. This is absolutely gorgeous. And I think the interior of these things screams nice cabin. Just the type of place you'd want to retreat to. Plus it has tankless on-demand water heat, Furion air conditioning system. It has a Furion unit there as well as a Furion unit here. 
stepping into the bedroom area. This is going to be a queen size bed. You have nightstands on the side, USB on this side, USB on that side. I don't see any 110 power over there though, which I think could be important too. You have 110 power right here though. Then you have a spot to hang some clothes. You have a spot up here. I think you'd want to use that for like a curtain. Over here, you have a nice blackout shade. I like how it's tucked behind a relatively flat valance. Fireplace in the bedroom, which is really nice. It's also a heater, so it generates heat in here as well, so you don't have to rely purely on your propane if you're just wanting to heat the room at night. Then you have your TV in the corner. Nice little desk area. You can put a little bar stool here if you need to work as well. This is just a great setup. I love these Ibex RV suites. And stepping back here, you have a really cool back deck that is covered with lights. Again, this is screaming like hunting lodge, something you'd want to put out on a piece of property. And these things are super affordable for what they are. This is really, really cool. I love these units and I filmed a couple of them. Let's go outside real quick and take a look at some of the things that they've done out there. Okay, so we already looked at the front, uh, but one thing that I do think they could have done different here. So they have these Westlake off-road inspired tires. They have it boxed underneath the frame section, which is nice, but they don't have a suspension equalizer. I think this RV is screaming for a suspension equalizer, whether it's the Dexter Easy Flex, whether it's the Lippert Equiflex, whether it's a Moride system. I don't know if Moride makes one that's compact enough to fit on this size of RV, but at least like an Equiflex or uh, Easy Flex, I think would be a really, really good addition. If you're gonna put anything that makes it appear as if there's any off-road capability at all, you need to put the suspension system to be able to give people the peace of mind that at least all that shock isn't going to transfer into the chassis of the RV. But that's the main thing that I saw out here. Uh, it needs a suspension equalizer, heavy duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts. So this does not have auto leveling. The front tongue jack is a smart jack. So again, it will raise or lower to a set height um, if you program it to do that. But once you have this thing level, you're going to want to drop your stabilizers to keep it from rocking. Then, of course, you have your steel steps back here with a nice LED light to illuminate that space. I love the LED strip lights that they put back here. I think that looks really good. And they put a 2-inch receiver. Not that you really need one, right? That's not for towing. So you could easily put all your bikes and everything else in this space right here, cover it all up, and have extra protection with the roof up top. But let me know what your thoughts are. I like this thing. I like all of them. I think there's a few little tweaks that would make them profoundly better in terms of reliability from a suspension perspective but overall they've done a lot of things right here and from what i've heard the pricing on these are absolutely insanely aggressive anyways leave a comment below i'd love to know what your thoughts are guys if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon